Gentlemen, welcome to AU. Thank you. Thank welcome. you. Sure, absolutely. Um, yeah, so one of the coolest things about working at Autodesk is always going to obviously be the technology that we get immersed to and some of the forward-looking uh, perspectives we get to get to see on how the technology is evolving. Um, in spades, which is always much more rewarding, is you know, what you see today, the collection of the people that we actually get to talk to, and this, this panel is definitely a representation of that. Um, and, and, and we're bringing these guys up with some very specific lenses. It, the, the one obvious one is the global coverage of this conversation. But Joe, I, I would like to start with you. Um, you know, we've got to know your team for quite some time. Uh, you know, I'm looking at some of them in the front row. You, you employ some really talented people. Um, one of the big takeaways, is, as, as we've talked about before, you know, as, as a, a construction firm in Australia operating in, the, in its environment and its economy, you know, you have been an example of a leader that we've seen as an organization with their hands on the wheel of reaching down, understanding technology, and weaving that into some of the strategic decisions that you've made for your company. Can you spend a little bit of time with us this morning walking us through that process for you and, 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 and how that's evolved for you at, at Hanson Youngkin? Sure. Um, thank you very much. Sure. Uh, just to introduce Hanson Youngkin and, uh, and what we do, we are a company that's about to celebrate our 100 years uh, of operations, uh, family owned. We're now into our fourth generation of, uh, of family ownership, two families, and uh, we operate right across the country in both uh, major cities and regional locations, concentrating on education, health, industrial and defence, turning over $1.2 billion worth of work a year. Uh, average size project, 50 to 100 million. Our largest project at the moment is a, a $1.8 billion hospital uh, that we're just completing in a Adelaide, five-year build, and I'll talk about that uh, a little bit further. But I guess 100 years of operation, um, and you look at what's sustained and what's, and what's made us grow, we look back and, and we look at people, uh, we certainly look at leadership, um, but innovation has been part of our history. Uh, in the early 20s and, and 30s and 40s and so on, innovation was about material handling, uh, and about um, different construction techniques and methodology. And today, certainly, the uh, theme of the conference, of course, uh, innovation is more about technology and how we use technology to make us more efficient. So right across the country, we deliver uh, projects like this, very iconic projects um, in, in the education, health, industrial and defence sectors. Um, if you look back at the market in Australia in 2015, it's under a little bit of pressure. Um, the economy uh, overall is struggling. Um, Australia has sustained uh, 20 years without going into a recession, uh, but interest rates, as they are around the world, are, are very low. Uh, growth rates are subdued. And even though the sector that we concentrate on is uh, spending around about $45 billion a year, most uh, Australian construction companies are, um, are experiencing very low margins um, and therefore we need to be much more efficient about the way that we, that we operate. So the commercial uh, market in Australia, uh, spending levels have, uh, have declined by about 15% over the last uh, couple of years. Very low margin, increased risk environment. Uh, um, but the opportunities that we concentrate on as a company are, are what we're good at, uh, building hospitals, getting people uh, into education facilities uh, and uh, helping the defence force. So here we, we've, we've got pictured the, uh, the $1.8 billion Royal Adelaide Hospital. It's a 900-bed hospital. Now, typical of a delivery of that sort of scale of, of, of work is that uh, we bid that work on a design construction and maintenance arrangement where we have to operate the, uh, the facility for over 30 years. So that necessitates us to be heavily involved in the pre-construction, which Jim was talking about earlier, but also to make sure that we're managing the design process and, and integrating that design process with our construction techniques. So that forces us as an organisation to get in control of the model. It's no longer possible uh, as an organisation to accept a model and then accept those drawings and move to the field from there. 
So on many of our projects around the country, we actually control the model and as a result of that look at prefabrication, uh, construction methodology, et cetera, et cetera. But our key focus as a company uh, is, is looking at clients who maintain an ownership of their asset because it's easier for us to align our core values of safety, quality, and look at working with clients that recognise value beyond cost, i.e. that don't want to um, uh, award work to the lowest bidder. But to remain successful in this market, we need to be able to deliver faster, with better quality, more assurance and more transparency for our, for our clients. And more broadly, this means better design solutions, more sustainable buildings, maximising the capital investment and the efficiency of the assets that we're creating. So examples like the hospital are real examples where we have a vested interest. We need to do that in order to be uh, profitable. But if you step back from that, uh, the company strategy that we have looks at not only just a, a project by project phase of, of growth, so certainly BIM modelling and all the things that, that Jim was talking about there, but we step back from that and as an organisation, one of the things that we want to be able to do is look at how we're operating as a company and what we're learning from one job and one part of the country and being able to transfer across to the other part of the country. Clients often ask us, if you build a hospital in, in, in Melbourne, what value can you add if you're going to build that uh, hospital, uh, another hospital for us in Brisbane? And when I came into the organisation, I looked at how we were transferring knowledge and collaborating, and certainly there was a lot of good people transfer, a lot of great communication, but we weren't learning enough, enough about what we were doing from one place to the other. So we began to think about data that we, are, we can capture, that we are capturing, and using that data to uh, drive efficiency so we can build faster with better quality. So we started off looking at KPIs, benchmarks of our current and past performance in order to, uh, to start that process. And one of the things that was interesting in that is that we we looked at how we were performing as an organisation and we really didn't know enough about what we were doing with our key metrics. So I started off with safety um, and went around to our, our building sites across the country and had conversations with our people about how they were delivering uh, work safely. And I wanted them to be out in the field more because one of their main complaints was they were spending too much time in the office uh, on paperwork. So what we did was equip them with iPads and we used the BIM 360 product um, and gave uh, the safety operatives the ability to be able to capture data in the field using the iPads and the BIM 360 product. So today what they're doing is they're, is they're doing that, they're using plant maintenance records, they're taking photographs of safety incidences and what we're doing is taking that information up to a, an intranet that we call Highway. So Highway is an integrated management platform where we're taking all the information from what we're doing across the country and rolling that up so we can get metrics on, on performance. So I, know that I now know that if we have an incident to do with falls, I can uh, determine a root cause of that incident very, very quickly. So we can look at the trends in relation to safety, uh, safety performance and how we're operating, and then look at and drill down into how our contractors are performing across the country so we can, um, so we can in fact, improve our safety. Then we moved that same philosophy from the field, uh, and then we began with BIM 360 into quality, and we're doing the same thing with quality, so we can understand how we're managing our defects, how we're managing our quality, and share that with our clients. And now we've taken that uh, into procurement. So with our procurement, again, if we're using main uh, MEP contractors around the country, we are now understanding and tracking their performance very, uh, very closely with understanding how many man hours they're taking to build our hospitals, to build our education facilities, and we're actually using that data to inform us much more about productivity, efficiency, wastage, and getting much more lean as an organisation. So today, um, we really, from a management point of view, we're able to share with our clients dashboards about KPIs and performance, and importantly, our teams are using this technology to be more efficient in the field. 
So there's a real connectivity there, not only in the field, but also from a management point of view. From a, um, from a, uh, a point of view of implementing this, uh, this change management, the success here was culture and driving it through our business. So it was really important for me to ensure that the field operatives were comfortable with the technology and that they could use it, understand it, and make sure that they were making a difference. And it's really pleasing to see as we, we talk to our safety people how much they're enjoying that. They tell me that they're out in the field a lot more uh, and they're spending a lot more time doing what they came to work at Hanson Youngkin for. Joe, I, it's, uh, we definitely appreciate you sharing that insight into the evolution of Hanson Youngkin. It's, uh, it's an inspiring story of setting the strategic vision and enabling your team to execute on it at, at this con company level lens. And, and you can probably start hearing and picking apart the reasons why we, we, we are, are bringing forward companies like Hanson Young and they're, they're checking all those boxes on that future making things matrix. 